What's going on everyone? One hop here on here real quick to talk about the Jack Del Rio, the Washington football team, oh, Washington Commanders football team, whatever. I assume we're not going to be able to call it football. But anyway, let me know where you're tuning in from, city and state. Give yourself a shout out. Also, if you're tuning in from outside this great nation, let me know where you're tuning in from, country, region, province. So, Jack Del Rio, NFL coach, was asked a question by a reporter and responded to this question with a question regarding the January 6th incident at the Capitol. And all he said, and this is the most unbelievable thing. Now remember, a $100,000 fine for asking a question. All he said was, and he didn't downplay what happened on January 6th at all. I don't know anyone, I, I don't know anyone who is, let me say, serious that has downplayed what happened there. Everyone knows that it was a horrific situation and it was terrible, it should have never happened. And Jack Del Rio feels the same way. However, he said, I don't know why these other events that happened during the summer of 2020, after George Floyd's death, where there was riots across the country, confirmed caused billions of dollars in dam damage, confirmed countless lives lost, who knows, dozens more during these riots. How many businesses were ruined? How many people's lives were ruined? And now let's keep in mind where a lot of these riots happened, where there was burning, destruction, looting, killing, were mainly happening in black neighborhoods and the victims of all losing their business and losing a place to shop and losing their life were mainly all black people, right? So let's not forget that little detail about those riots of 2020. Now, all Jack Del Rio said was, okay, we're, we're, we're making a big deal of January 6th. Okay, got it. Why aren't we making a big deal of what happened during that summer? Where you have one incident that happened at the Capitol, horrible incident, but you had less than, according to DC standards, a million dollars in damage. Some people say that number's a little inflated, but it's DC. Toilet seats cost $500 in DC. So, a million dollars. Okay, fine. And we had one woman who was shot by an officer who lost her life. Now, there's people who are saying that other people lost their life. Yes, there were some officers who subsequently committed suicide. I believe one person, uh, after the event, a few blocks away, whatever, or the next day had um, uh, cardiac arrest. But at the event, at the event that took place on January 6th, there was the police officer who uh, shot the woman. Okay, all right. So at that incident, you had one, one life lost and you had, by some estimates, 750 to a million dollars of damage, but that's DC. Okay, now Jack Del Rio is saying, if we're making a big to-do about that, why are we not making a big to-do about the riots that burned entire cities, burned buildings? Did they chain the doors of a police station and light it on fire? Did they throw Molotov cocktails into a police car with officers in it? Didn't they take over a portion of a city with AR-15s, put a fence up and not let the police in? And inside that portion of the city that these people took over, there was burning, there was looting, there was rape, there was murder. All Jack Del Rio is saying is, got it, we're making a big deal about this event on January 6th. I got it, understood. Why aren't we making a big deal about this? Because this was a pretty significant event. It's not like we're talking about another isolated event that took place at another building. Now, I have some friends on both sides of the aisle, and I spoke to one friend who is a Democrat, okay? And he said, well, what people on the right are missing is what happened on January 6th wasn't People, he said, 
people are just looking at the damage and the destruction on January 6th, which really wasn't much. And there was only one life lost and nothing was burned down to the ground. Uh, there was real, no real looting, obviously. And one person lost their life. So people are comparing that to the amount of damage, the amount of burning, looting, destruction, murder, death, rape, of what happened during that summer of 2020 and saying, this is not even apples to apples. This is completely outrageous. But what they're, they're comparing the wrong thing. And this gentleman who is a Democrat uh, said, those people who are looking at, like comparing the damage and the life lost, they're not looking at why those people were at the Capitol on January 6th why people were at the Capitol on January 6th were to disrupt our democracy and disrupt the system that we live by. And that is what was so egregious. And that is why people on one side feel like it trumps everything, no pun intended, that happened during that summer of 2020. Because of why they were there, and the purpose of why they were there. That was the most egregious thing. They were trying to disrupt the government of our country. So they're saying, hey, forget about the destruction, burning, looting billions of dollars. We're worried about what they were trying to do. They failed. It was a failed attempt, right? So it's almost as if Someone is saying, hey, uh, there's two people being charged with attempted murder, right? Or there's two, there's two attempts at murder. This person over here attempts to shoot and kill this guy. But this person over here attempts to shoot and kill maybe the leader of the free world. Yeah, okay, kind of the same, but... This guy over here was trying to do something way more egregious to a much more important person. So it's that much worse because of it. So that's where they stand. Now, I'm not saying I agree with that. I'm not saying that I agree with the other side. I don't, I'm not getting involved. But what I'm saying is in speaking to people who are on the left, that's why they're making the January 6th incident so big. It's not about what actually happened at the Capitol. They're saying it's what they were trying to do. And what they were trying to do was a threat to our democracy and the, the system of government as we know it. And that's why it was so bad. On the other side, of course, people are saying, okay, well, in the summer of 2020, there were a group of people, protesters turned rioters, that pushed down gates and tried to breach the White House. They tried to breach the White House. They had to be stopped by Secret Service and security. And simultaneously, a building, a library of some sort, apparently, across the street from the White House was lit on fire. And a lot of other things happened in D.C. And a lot of other things happened in cities across the country where lots of people lost their businesses and the hit to the economy. Forget about it. They lost their business. These are black people, black business owners, had their businesses burned to the ground, right? And people of other races, of course. And people had so much destruction in their where they lived. And let's not forget to mention that there were other governmental buildings in these cities, town halls, courthouses, police stations that were burned, vandalized. And then, you know, I don't understand how anyone could look at what happened there and say, well, that wasn't such a big deal. That wasn't such a big deal. I don't know how anyone can say, well, yeah, that was bad, but they weren't trying to disrupt government. I don't know. When you light a courthouse 
a police station on fire and you break all the windows and you chain the doors with cops inside? I can't say that's good. When you go through a city and essentially burn it to the ground causing billions of dollars of damage? I don't know if you can say that's okay. If you pull up in a car and are handing rifles and AR-15 and body armor out to individuals, and you pull up in a truck and you're handing baseball bats, helmets, and shields out to individuals, and you subsequently take over the police department in an area of a city, you put up fencing, you keep the police out, you only let certain people in, and inside it is pure bedlam with rape and murder happening. I don't know how people don't say that is a threat to our democracy and a threat to the fabric of this country. I don't know how, I'm not saying one isn't, but what I'm saying is I don't understand how you can say that one is and this over here, no problem at all. And those of you know, I'm talking about that Chaz or Chop. It was Chop and it turned to Chaz. I don't know what the hell it was. So you can't be a reasonable person and say all of that that happened wasn't so bad. But what happened on January 6th was the end of the world. I think what you have to say, and I and I talk to people on the right, and most of them, almost everyone unanimously said, yeah, what happened on January 6th was atrocious. But what happened during that summer of 2020 with those riots was also an atrocity and should also be treated as such. And where you lose people is when you start treating people differently and you start treating events differently. And it goes across the board. We learned this as children if you had a sibling. When your parents treated your sibling one way for doing something and then you do something which you feel was not nearly as bad but you get punished while, while your sibling who did something way worse gets no punishment. It breeds animosity. It breeds confusion. It causes a divide. It's, it's never good. So in speaking to people on the right, they said, hey, listen, this group over here wants to make a big deal on January 6th. Great. They would have more foundation and they would have more of a leg to stand on if at the same time they were also saying, and by the way, what happened during the summer of 2020 with those riots, burning, looting, billions of dollars in damage, numerous people murdered, that was really bad too. And we need answers about that too, because there's people who still haven't recovered from that. There's entire neighborhoods that still haven't recovered from that. So if the people on this side were saying, yeah, that, that, that was horrible too. And let's get to the bottom of that and put some people behind bars and hold some people accountable. But that's not happening. You can't burn someone's store, their entire livelihood and their life. You can't burn it to the ground during the riot and then go in and steal things from it before it completely burns to the ground and then walk away, get arrested, and then get out on bond because some politicians raised money to bail these people out and some celebrities raised some money to bail these people out. So they burned something to the ground, they looted it, they were present for murder, but they're out on bond. Yet someone who was in the Capitol on January 6th is still in jail. They didn't burn anything. They didn't steal anything. They went in the building with the group of idiots. They went in. Waving a flag, wearing a red hat. They went in.
They didn't break anything. They didn't burn anything. They didn't kill anyone. That person is still in jail while the person who burned, murdered, looted is out. That's where you lose people. That's where people say this is not right. This is not okay. And that's the difference. That's the difference here. So I know a lot of people on one side are like, ah, oh, January 6th, they're making a big deal of it. Da, da, da. That's not okay. And then the other people are like, well, you know, you know, this is a threat to our democracy and this could have been the end of the... Everyone knows that the people who stormed the Capitol, they failed. They failed miserably. Four hours later, everyone came back in and the vote went through and it was it was done. It was like as if it never happened. Four hours later, okay? So they failed at their attempt, all right? Was the attempt itself disgusting? Yes. Idiotic? Yes. Yes. Very much so. However, we have to be real here, folks. Now, you can't, on top of that, when an American citizen voices his opinion that, not that one thing was not wrong, he didn't say the January 6th thing wasn't wrong. He just said what happened over here during the summer of 2020 was wrong as well. And to some degree, by some standards, way worse when it comes to destruction and loss of life and all that. So why are we not making a big deal about that? That's all he said. The video is on Twitter. You can watch it. I think the big deal in what Jack Del Rio said was he called the January 6th thing a dust up. I wouldn't call it a dust up. It was a little bit more than a dust up, Jack. A little bit more than a dust up. He could have chose his words a little bit better. Far from a dust up. But I think if I were him, I would have said what happened, the events that took place on the Capitol on January 6th were unacceptable, terrible, disgusting, and un-American. However, as an American, I feel that what happened, what transpired during the summer of 2020, following George Floyd's death with the destruction, burning, and looting of cities and black business and loss of black lives was also horrific and disgusting. And I don't know why that is not being investigated to the level that the January 6th incident is being investigated. I, as an American, don't, I feel that there's some disparity here. And I don't agree with that. Both incidents were wrong. Both should be handled the same way. Maybe that's how he could have said it. Either way, for saying that he was fined a hundred thousand dollars. That's the scariest part of this whole thing. Now people are being fined a hundred thousand dollars when they were asked a question and they just responded with their opinion. You can no longer have an opinion on current events unless your opinion conforms to a certain narrative. That's more than frightening. That's scarier than all this stuff. And that's something that everyone watching this should really, I don't care what side of the aisle you're on, left, right, conservative, liberal, independent, I don't care. I don't care what you, no matter who you are, black, white, male, female, gay, straight, trans, whatever, the fact that a human being living in America expressed his personal opinion on a current events situation and was subsequently fought and he wasn't he wasn't derogatory in it, he didn't have any ill speech, he didn't say it in any kind of ill way. He was speaking very kindly and just very normally. He didn't have any ill intent of what he said. There was no tone in his voice where he was putting one thing down. He was just kind of very matter of fact. Find $100,000. That should scare everybody watching this.
Anyway, for those of you who are wondering, there is no more free speech. Speech now costs you money depending on the speech you speak. And in this case, there is no free speech. For Jack Del Rio, speech costs $100,000. You might be next.